didn't work. Uh, but conservatives would, I, I've actually met with some leading conservatives and they, those who are realize this is not a hoax, they know that it's gonna bite them as the public realizes that this was not a hoax. And so they would like it to be addressed with conservative principles and that is let the market help you find uh, uh, energies that are less carbon intensive and energy efficient, same things, by putting this rising fee, and, as long, and that's, they, they say that is the conservative approach. And so it'd be nice if he would sit down with some conservatives and try to come to something, because it is gonna have to go through the U.S. Senate. And you can't, uh, you know, you can't solve the problem without getting conservatives and liberals on the same page. And they're all, they all have children and grandchildren, and, and uh, so it's possible, but we, you know, we have to, we have to do it. Okay, you have any other question? Uh, oui. uh, yeah. Je vais, je vais la poser en français. Yeah. Voilà. On a l'impression d'assister à un dialogue de sourds, en fait, et on est là pour parler d'un autre récit sur le climat. Est-ce qu'il n'y a pas euh, d'autres sciences, comme la psychologie sociale, par exemple, ou d'autres interlocuteurs qui pourraient vous aider à sortir de ce cul-de-sac? How, how can, how can uh... Uh, social science uh, be of help in uh, because you s seem to have a, a dialogue with politicians, scientists versus politician. But do you have? I mean, hard sciences. How can uh, social science help? Or well, do they? Yeah. Um, well, it is a social problem. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, and how do we get these uh, people? Uh, to uh, to work together. I mean, in the U.S., it's just it's going to pop. You know, the, the 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 it's dysfunction. Our government in Washington is pretty dysfunctional. Um, I I I I don't know. Uh, <laughs> how can how can you change? I mean, how can you change mind? Because when you're talking about bringing the price of fossil fuel up by fee or tax or whatever, uh, you'll have to change mind because you'll have to change the way people behave. And the question is about psychology, you know, global, uh, global psychology of, of people. How, how can they change they, their behavior? Yeah, and the thing is that you, you know, I think that it's, it is an education problem, and that's why the Citizens Climate Lobby is working so hard to write op-eds and, and letters to the editor. Uh, because, you, you know, you can't say, oh, let's stop consuming so much. You know, if, if there are countries where the emissions are shooting up. I should have had the graph for China and India, where <laughs> their emissions are, are, are shooting up. Uh, and they have every right to aspire to better lifestyles. And uh, so, what, but they need to be uh, clean energy lifestyles. And they actually want that, you know. And I, you know, I'm helping organize a workshop in China, which a week after this uh, conference here, because they, they want to find uh, clean energy. They've got so much air pollution. Uh, so they would like to find alternatives to fossil fuels. But, uh, you know, it, it is, a, we, we, our public is not very well educated on this. And it's very hard because in the U.S. you have this constant advertisements. Every, every hour you can see a few of them from the fossil fuel industry saying, oh, look at us, we're now creating jobs in the U.S. and we're making the U.S. energy independent and they're doing it by fracking, and by fracking for oil as well as for gas. And the amount of oil and gas down there is enough to doom our children and grandchildren. And yet, their advertisements are very persuasive. They have a lot of, they, they've been able to hire the best uh, 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 people you can get for writing these uh, stories. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. I. I wish I had the answers. I, you know, I can I can see some of these logical things, but the social social side of it—that's the hard part. Um, yeah. 
another question, yeah? Yeah, uh, those of us who live and work in the South Pacific already see the effects of climate change rise. I mean, houses are being washed away. My, uh, my home village, we can't dig the trees anymore because the water lens is being affected. So we dig down, and we dig the trains, we pollute the water, well water. Now, the AOSIS has been saying 1.5 to survive. I'm gathering what you're saying, but it's too late. Well, it's too late to avoid any impacts. We, we see, um, you know, there's, there's sea levels going up 3.4 millimeters a year, which is a little 14 inches a century. But we, I think we can avoid the really uh, disastrous consequences, in, including the, the many meter sea level rise and the extermination of a large fraction of the species. And those are the two irreversible things on any time scale that we would care about. Um, yeah, there's there's some uh, damage already being done, and um, th there's a very good uh, cause for, uh, for reparations. Um, a suggestion, I was recently in Norway, and, and there, there were three representatives of three political parties at a meeting put together by friend, Friends of the Earth Norway. And they, uh, they like this idea of fee and dividend, uh, and, but they had an, another wrinkle, which is kind of interesting, and that is the portion of the fossil fuels used for international transportation, air and, and ship, they suggest that should be, the fee collected from that should go to developing countries to uh, fund these kind of problems. And you know the amount that you would generate that way is uh, it would solve this problem. You know, the, the, you, you go and ask for this hundred billion dollars and you have a terrible time getting it and then they give it to you in a form which is not real money. It's some credit or something. It's not going to work. You need an actual mechanism to regularly collect money which and, and uh, using the fee from the international transport piece which is it's only a few percent, but it comes out to hundreds of billions of dollars by the time it gets up to a reasonable uh, fee rate. Thank, thank you, Jim. Um, the, the, the topic of tonight was be clear. If there's any scientist who hasn't been clear and tried to tell us the truth, um, I, I can't find another. But the, my question to you, um, as we're, we're examining um, how to, to talk about these things in, in a different way is more about the role of science. I mean, do we expect our scientists to be politicians and policy makers? Do we, do we put too much pressure on, on, on the, the methodology of science at the sake of the message? Is, there, is, there, is this time for a new, a new understanding of the role of a scientist? Well, you know, I'm, I'm starting in January, I'm going to start working on a book which will be titled In Search of Truth, because I think the scientific method, you know, a scientist is trained to be skeptical of his, of his own conclusions. And I was particularly lucky in the, the where, where I grew up as a scientist under Professor Van Allen, where he had the idea, you had to make an original proposition and, you know, you, and then defend it before five professors. And you had no time to come up with something interesting which is going to be right, because you're not going to suddenly think of a new, new scientific uh, theory and have it be correct. So you could say the moon is made out of green cheese, but then you just, you had to say, well, how am I going to investigate this? And, and you, and um, anyway, so I, I learned to be very skeptical of my own uh, suggestions. And also because I was a shy person, I was always very uncertain. But that's, that's not the way it's working in these sort of things politically. People come with an answer and then they find as much evidence as they can to support that answer. That's not the way you do science. <laughs> you, are, you have to be very skeptical. And then, and so, I, 
and, and particularly in this problem, it covers such a range of things that you need the scientific method and you need to apply it correctly. And then you'll come to the conclusion, oh, that cap and trade is not gonna work. And politician has some reason because it's got a lot of political levers. It lets them give uh, special favors to different people so they like it, but it's not gonna work. Okay. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, I'm sorry I have to stop this extension. Thank you again very much.